Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton, as well as WACA TV in Ashland, and now also HCAT in Holliston. Tom Nappy alongside Larry Sacklad to bring you post-77 baseball, as today they take on Matic. Post 107, Ashland 7 and 2 on the season. Natick is 7 and 4, just coming off a doubleheader win over Hudson yesterday. Natick was able to sweep the doubleheader to get towards the top of zone 5. Without further ado, let's take a look at the Natick batting order as they get set to face Shane Leary, who is on the mound today for Ashland. Batting first for Natick, playing center field, Max Ferrucci. Batting second, DHing Jackson Dobeck. Batting third, number 30, the left fielder, Will Haskell. Number 15, the shortstop, Noah Joseph, hitting cleanup. Number seven, John Warnley, the third baseman, is going to hit fifth. Number 14, J.J. Hickman, the first baseman, hitting six, as there's a strike. Carter Duran, the catcher, hitting seventh. Sam Siegel, the right fielder, hitting eighth. And Peter Minoli, the second baseman, hitting ninth. Four Natick, post 107. And we'll get you the Ashland defense in just a moment, right after this pitch, as Shane Larry is set to deliver. This is up the middle, and it's picked up by the second baseman. Little throw over to first, no problem, one away. Larry, how about that Ashland defense today? We got Louis Rossi at third base. Jackson Horning at short, Cole Glassburn at second base, Zach Pesson playing first base, left to right, Dominic Cavanaugh, John Pesson, Ben Thomas in right, Sean Jewett is catching Shane Leary. And Connor Donovan, our cameraman for today's action, as that pitch is a ball to Jackson Dobeck, the designated hitter. It's a beautiful 84 degree sunny day for baseball. The humidity making it feel more like in the 90s. Is that pitch down low? But we're in the nice shade over here, so we don't mind. I don't feel any humidity at all. Should have taken care of your business before you came down. Oh, if we were in the sun, you'd feel it. As that is outside, Shane Leary struggling a bit with Jackson Dobeck, the DH. Shane Leary also pitched the first go around against Natick, a game which we had for you, as the post 77 was able to take the victory over Natick. It was a drubbing, it a mercy was. game. Yep, Shane Larry pitched fantastic. I believe it was uh, 11 to one, something like yeah. that. 11 to one, but I'm, I believe it was, uh, was Dylan Larry closed that one out as there's a strike. It was Cole Glassburn from Hopkinton. Cole Glassburn, that was it. He got his first uh, hit in Legion ball along with Drew Rankatori. That one's fouled away as Shane Leary has battled back. It's now a full count on Dobeck. Shane had played uh, club ball at University of uh, uh, New Hampshire, so he got a lot of experience, and he was a really good player for Ashland High School. Wind up and the pitch, and this is fouled. Count remains full. Nice barehanded play there by Coach Johnson. Very nice, very nice. Larry set to deliver. Swinging strike and he got him two away. <laughs> and then Sean Jewett kind of overthrew that one. Uh, I didn't see a thing. Cameron might have caught it, but I didn't see it. <laughs> Will Haskell, the left fielder, will step in. Hey, if you're going to overthrow something, that's the time to do it. Right. Nobody on base. Wind up and the pitch. Just outside. That was a nice job by Larry battling back. He was down 3-0. Battled back for the K and out number two. That one down low as Larry finds himself behind once again. He's not happy with himself so far, even though he's recorded two outs. Haskell is not related, just in case you're wondering at home, not related to the Haskell family from Leave It to Beaver. Will Haskell went three for three mm. in the doubleheader with two RBIs yesterday. Two and one count now. <laughs> Wind 
Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Two and two on Haskell. Shane was really working on his breaking ball earlier in warm-ups. I happen to catch a sneak peek. And there's strike three. He gets um, two strikeouts in the inning for Shane Leary. He battles back twice down in the count and gets it done here in the top of the first, the bottom of the first, coming up next on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the first inning, Ashland post 77 coming up to the plate. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, leading things off. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, batting second. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, hitting third. Dom Cavanaugh, the left fielder, hitting cleanup. Luke Gustafson, the designated hitter, hitting fifth. Sean Jouette, the catcher, hitting sixth. John Pesson, the center fielder, hitting seventh. Zach Pesson, the first baseman, hitting eighth. As this is hit in the air over to left field. And getting under it is Will Haskell. One pitch, one out here in the bottom of the first. And batting ninth is Cole Glasper in the second baseman for Ashland, post 77. Hayden Scully, the pitcher for Natick. And with the rest of the Natick defense, here's Larry Sacklad. Over at third base is John Warnley. Shortstop, Noah Joseph. Second baseman, Peter Manoli. Ball up here, upstairs. J.J. Hickman. At first base, Will Haskell in left, Max Farrucci in center, Sam Siegel in right. Carter Doran behind the plate, catching, that's a strike, catching Hayden Scully. Natick has improved to 7-4 and four after two wins yesterday against Hudson. They started off a little rocky, but they have since strung together a few wins to get right back in the mix in zone five and get this Natick has played two games in the past three days and now actually this is their third game in two days uh, post 77 has played three games in 14 days as that one's fouled away some good time off for post 77 and they haven't had a lot of weather interferences which has allowed them to really get that full week off that zone five typically gets around July 4th. As this is up the right side, foul. That's unusual, Lewis Rossi pulling the ball down the first baseline. I don't know whether the third baseman has the book on him, but he'll go to the uh, left side uh, quite often. And he's got the green light, I'm told, to bunt. Line up and the pitch. And this is ripped up the middle, but the shortstop in the right place at the right time for the second out. That was the left side, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, I was just saying. Jackson Horning, the shortstop, will step in. Mr. All-World, Jackson Horning. Actually, he's a pretty modest kid. This is up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to first. Got him. Six to three they go in the bottom of the first. A one, two, three first inning for both teams. To the top of the second we go on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the second inning due up for Natick Post 107, four, five, and six. Noah Joseph, John Warnley, and JJ Hickman to face Shane Larry, who had a one, two, three top of the first. Wind up and the pitch. And it's just outside, 1-0. and oh. Shane's waiting to get himself in a groove. Larry delivers. There's a strike. I'd call that the groove. There you go. Yeah, Larry has battled uh, back quite a bit so far in this uh, one-plus inning. That one fouled away, 1-2. and two. For those at home that want to follow some kids, see where they're going to school. We have Brad Seymour, Ben Thomas, Zach Pesson, Lou Rossi heading out to UMass Amherst. As this is hit up the middle, and it's off the second base bag, just an awkward hop. And that is going to be pretty much the weirdest single I've ever seen for Noah Joseph. Well, you can't score it any other way. Nobody put a glove on it. No way. That, that was just hitting the right place as John Wernley, the third baseman, will step in. I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm sure it's happened, but I haven't seen it. 
Wind up and the pitch. Down low. And another, you were mentioning uh, some of the colleges that post 77 players are heading to. Dom Cavanaugh heading to Tufts. Ooh. They hook up with Tommy Leone from the Hopkins and Hillers. Yeah, they'll have a nice TVL squad down there. Well, they got to make the team first. I think they have more than enough talent to do that. I think this is our first home game, is it not? Our first home game broadcast. Right, right. They had a rain out on Friday, I think. Well, they did play it, but the weather was uh, very questionable. And uh, when it's that questionable, unfortunately, we're not able to broadcast due to this very expensive equipment we use. Right, right. 3-0 pitch from Larry, and he steps off the mound as a late time called by the hitter. And that was Post 77's last game back on Friday, July 6, and they ended up getting the victory over Bill Ricca. It was a 5-1 to one win. And we were going to broadcast against North Chelmsford. Ooh, oh. late strike call there. John Wernley and the Natick bench did not like that one. I agree with the umpire. Thought that was right down the middle of the plate. But that was a forfeit by North Chelmsford. They brought eight guys down. And that one's up high, so Wernley does draw the walk. J.J. Hickman, the first baseman, will step in. Last game against Natick, I was really impressed with Shane Leary's poise. Uh, way more poise than a high schooler would have. And I guess that's due to the fact that playing with a bunch of kids at club baseball at a Division I school. Larry set to deliver from the stretch. Takes a look at second and deals. In there for a strike. No argument there. Luke Gustafson had a tremendous pitching performance in post 77's last game as that pitch is down low. He went six and a third of two hit baseball in the five to one victory. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle, right back to the pitcher. The throw to third, a little high, but Rossi able to pull it down to get the lead runner. And J.J. Hickman will reach on the one to five force out. Lou Rossi is not happy with that uh, slide by the uh, runner coming from second to third. Uh, he just threw the ball back in anger to uh, Shane Leary, but he must got train wrecked over there. He certainly did. Kind of looked like the slide was going for his ankle. Still talking to himself out there. As Carter Duran, the catcher, steps in. Larry working from the stretch. And this is ripped up the middle. Larry's able to make the grab and the throw over to second for one. Throw to first, double play. What a great defensive stand there for post 77 as they are able to get the 1-4-3 double play to retire the side. We will head to the bottom of the second. It's a scoreless game on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the second inning, 4-5 and 6 to up for post-77. Dom Cavanaugh, Luke Gustafson, and Sean Jewett. A nice double play to retire the side in the top of the second. And it remains a scoreless game here at Ashland Middle School. Two very happy high school coaches. We'll take a look at that play. That pitch just outside from Hayden Scully. Scully set to deliver. And this is up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman, as Cavanaugh is going to head over to first base. A nice single to start off the bottom of the second. Luke Gustafson, the DH, will step in. Well, look at the throng of fans here tonight, Tom. Must be the nice weather. Yeah, good turnout for this game here today. Post 77, five home games this week. As they will play every weekday evening. A pitch down low, 1-0 to Gustafson. So there's no, what are we going to do tonight, excuses. That's right. A 
pitch outside. Every game is at 545 with the with the exception of Thursday's game, which will be at 530. So mark it down on your calendar as Scully delivers just high. He wanted that pitch, Tom. And he hasn't shown his pickoff move over the first, if he has one. So he's using the hold onto the ball quick. There's a strike, three and one. And slide step it to get it to the catcher quickly. Kavanaugh will run. That's fouled away, full count. Gustafson's a big kid. I'd ask for a birth certificate if I were the native coach, but <laughs> takes up a lot of space there in a the batter's box. The feeling uh, Kavanaugh will go. That one's down low. That's going to be a walk, and Kavanaugh's going to take off to second and turn towards third, but head back. And it's going to be two on with no outs for post 77. Sean Jewett, the catcher, will step in. Sorry, Dom, that's not a stolen base. Nope, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't credit him one. Well, if he's looking for it, he's not going to get it. Turns towards second. Kavanaugh had a big lead off the second base bag. I think he wants to test the pickoff move. Pitch outside. Well, he didn't throw over to first, but he did use an inside move to get to second base or look runner back at second. That's fouled away, one and one. What do we do if fans start encroaching our area? What do we do, Tom? Do we set up a little police tape? I figured area? you'd have your security guards on duty today. Well, I'm on vacation. So I know you're getting famous for doing these games. <laughs> the bunt is going to be a strike. It's a foul ball. One and two. I don't know whether Coach Obit is upset with Kavanaugh that he didn't just go anyway. The umpire did wave it off. That one is low, two and two. Sean Jewett hitting a 667 heading into this week. He won't be bunting here. As this is hit in the air over to left field, but in the right place at the right time is Haskell and both runners We'll stay put. One away, but there is two on as John Pesson, the center fielder, will step in. Haskell's had a couple of balls hit right at him. Didn't have to move right or left. Perfectly positioned. Wind up and the pitch. That's fouled away. Base umpire just to Confirming with the home plate umpire the number of outs. They'll do that from time to time. If one loses the count, they'll tap their chest. Scully working from the stretch and turns towards second as Kavanaugh had a big lead. It'll slide back. Scully looks at second and deals outside. One and one. They had a crazy rundown in the first game. I think it was uh, Rankatori that got caught in a rundown or Glassburn that got caught in a rundown. That one outside. Two and one. Which could have let us go from that game earlier had that not been an out. It's very true. That was a game that went well into the night with the prior, uh, I believe it was a senior Ruth game Taking a little longer than expected. Right, you didn't put in for my overtime? Well, you don't get overtime. No. Two and two. That was part of your salary increase deal. You get no overtime. You didn't get me a hamburger from the senior Ruth kids? We are just talking. The Post ought to set up a little uh, snack shack here in the summer. Full count pitch. This is up the middle, past the reach of the pitcher. The shortstop grabs it, steps on to second for one, throw to first, and they'll get the double play, as it will be a six to three double play to retire the side here in the bottom of the second. To the third we go. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM television, as well as WACA-TV. 
Top of the third inning, eight, nine, and one due up for Natick. Sam Siegel, the right fielder. Peter Minoli, the second baseman. And Max Ferrucci, the center fielder, to face Shane Larry. A scoreless game here on HCAM and WACA TV. Connor Donovan on camera. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the broadcast for Ashland Legion Baseball. This is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first, no problem. Six to three for out number one. I'll bring up Peter Minoli, the second baseman. Guys are got a really beautiful hop on that play. All I had to do was get it over to the first. Easy. Easy peasy. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. At least we can hear the ump tonight. The 0-1. And this is up the middle, right to the second baseman. Throw to first, out number two. Cole Glassburn and Zach Pesson on the four to three. Two away. Number Glassburn had a little case of the yips during a, a high school season. And uh, so far this summer, he's, he's looking really, really solid. Certainly is, as Max Ferrucci steps in. The laid off man. Hits this one in the air, foul territory. Pesson trying to chase it down, Ooh. but it is going to be out of play. A fan almost making the catch. Right, oh, they got to protect their coconut on that one. Certainly do. I was frightened. Blinded by the sun over there. Wind up and the pitch. That one is low and outside, one and one. I disagree, I thought he had the corner. That's where they pay the man in blue. That's call right. balls and strikes. That's right. Larry deals. And this is foul. One and two. Lou Rossi's going to the Eisenberg Business School at UMass. So he'll make some cake upon graduation. Not a bad plan. He's not a poli sci major or a uh, sociology major. That pitch down low. He's a moolah guy. That's what he is. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle. Gloved by the second baseman. Throw to first. No problem. Six to three. Four to three. Four to three. That is your top of the third. To the bottom of the third we go. It's scoreless here on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the third inning, eight, nine, and one due up for post 77 as Zach Pesson steps in to face Hayden Scully. Did I tell you I got a girlfriend while you were on vacation? That's that a ball. Pitches up high, one and zero. Oh. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> that didn't happen. I dreamt about it though. Scully deals. And there's your interesting fact of the day. That one takes a high hop, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Six to three on the out. Cole Glasper and the second baseman will step in out of Hopkinton High School. Been very stingy with the hits today, Tom. Certainly has. We've got a bit of a pitcher's duel going on here. We gotta get a rally going. We gotta put our rally caps on to show that we're not so that we're very impartial. That's right. Cole Glassburn hitting a 214 coming into this week. Watch out, Tom. Hit in the air, foul. Is well above us. <laughs> oh, and one. Line up and the pitch. That one's fouled away. Oh, and two. Like to see post 77 hitters. Show a little patience there. They got to string together some hits. Set to deliver. Just outside, one and two. Cole during the regular season, meaning high school ball, hit about a 350 foot shot down at Millis. He's got power. The one, two, strike three. Just like that. Get some swinging. That's called a BTU. Yeah, that was a nice pitch yeah. there by. Uh, Cooled us Scully. down a little bit over there with the breeze. 
How did you fare over your vacation with the heat? Very well. I was on a beach, so I didn't complain too much. But I felt bad for those people that were inland. Uh, somebody sent me a picture of you they, with your pail and your shovel making sand, sand castles. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Right, Nothing wrong with that. No, no. The 0 1 pitch from Scully. That one's fouled away by Ben Thomas. 0 and 2. Ben can go to all fields and with power. He possesses excellent speed, so. Anything on the ground might be a challenge. The 0 2. And this is ripped up the middle. That's going to be a base hit as it'll trickle into center field. A two out single for Ben Thomas. I'll label him as Mr. Greenlight as far as swiping bags. Anytime he feels he can get it. We haven't seen Scully's move over to first base yet. Maybe Ben Thomas can prompt him into throwing over. Lewis Rossi stepping in. Checking at first, nearly got him. Oh, that looked like a pretty good move to me by Scully. Not bad, surprised me. But now Ben has seen it, so he can gauge it. Wind up in the pitch. And that one is low, and now Thomas taking off. He's safe at second. Ben Thomas gets the stolen base, regardless of a good pickoff move by Hayden Scully. Louis Rossi, green light to bunt. That one is low as well. Thomas thought about it, but back to second he goes. Fans are getting a little unruly here. I don't know if that late back call by the uh, post-77 bench is just deception, as this is driven into center field. That'll drop down. Ben Thomas waved around third. The throw in is not going to be close, and it's 1-0 post-77. An RBI single for Lewis Rossi. My favorite player. I say it every game. Two outs and post 77 get some offense going and they have taken a one nothing lead after back to back base hits by Ben Thomas and Lewis Rossi as Jackson Horning steps in first to check in on Rossi he slides back safe. I predict he's going to be like an auditor or work for the IRS when he gets out of school. I can't afford to pay Mr. Rossi too bad. That pitch down <laughs> low one and oh. I have no idea where you're going with that. Well, he's just kind of, you know, very matter of fact. There's a strike. He's One heartless, in other words. He's heartless playing baseball. So I figured that we might translate to his uh, occupation. Scully's set to deliver. And that pitch is going to be low and get away from the catcher. An easy advance for Rossi. He got fooled on a breaking pitch. And by the way, any statement made by Larry Sacklad does not does not reflect the views of me or this station. As this is hit in the air, that's gone over to center field, and that is back towards the wall. But Max Ferrucci able to make the catch for the third out. But post 77 does play to run. It's a one nothing ball game as we head to the top of the fourth on HCAM and WACA TV. Top of the fourth inning, two, three, and four do up for Natick. Jackson Dobeck, Will Haskell, and Noah Joseph to face Shane Larry. A one nothing lead for post 77. A couple two out base hits. Gets Ashland on top. Ben Thomas started it off with a single. And then Lewis Rossi drove in Ben Thomas with a single of his own. That was after Ben Thomas stole a base as well. And it's a one nothing game. And with the way this game has gone so far, that might be all you need, as these two pitchers look pretty sharp today. Well, Shane's going to have the 2-3-4, so. As this is up the first base side, and that is going to be foul. 0-1. Oh, that was just foul. I'll take you through the zone five standings in just a moment. Wind up and the pitch outside. One and one. 
at the top of the pack with a 9 and 0 record is Lowell Post 87. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike, one and two. Ashland Post 77 in second with se seven wins, two losses. Medford Post 45 and Natick Post 107, both at seven and four. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike there, and that will be an out, one away. That'll bring Will Haskell, the left fielder. The rest of the standings in zone five, Waltham four and six, Hudson four and seven. Bill Rick is three and six, North Chelmsford four and eight, Sudbury three and seven, and Newton two and six. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the right side, bobbled by the second baseman, but he picks it up, throws it up first. Nice job by Glassburn, a great recovery from a little bobble there, two away. That area of the infield, is, that skin part is, is haunted, even around the shortstop area. Yeah, that took a high, higher hop than I think Glassburn expected, but he was able to pull it down, get control of it, and get it over to Pesson. Here's Lewis Rossi's buddy. And that is inside, as Joseph was just able to get out of the way of that one. Shane hasn't been able to get his curveball over as much as he'd like. Another inside pitch, two and oh. He'll show it though. Staying mainly with his fastball. Set to deliver. Inside, three and oh. Line up in the pitch. And that is going to be a four pitch walk. Going inside on Noah Joseph. That'll nope. bring up John Wernley, the third baseman. Noah Joseph took a little extra look at uh, Shane Leary. I don't, think, I don't think there was any intent there, but it was uh, you know, close to the shirt. I think he did his homework and realized that Noah Joseph doesn't hit the uh, inside pitches that well. That one down low. Obviously no warm-up activity for either side. Larry set to deliver. Another low pitch. That one's going to get by Juet, and Joseph advances on the wild pitch. So runner on second, two outs. As Shane Larry may be running into a little bit of trouble here. Coach Johnson moving his outfielders around based on his uh, spray chart. Another inside pitch, that is seven straight balls from Larry. He's gonna take his time, manicure the mound a little bit, collect himself. Pitch out of the stretch. Looks at second and deals. There's a strike, three and one. Larry set to deal. And that is going to be a walk. Second walk in a row from Larry. That's two on, two outs. J.J. Hickman, the first baseman, will step in. That's a great baseball name. J.J. Hickman. Wind up in the pitch. And this is up the middle and dropped by Glassburn. He'll pick it up and step on the second base bag for the out. And that will retire the side in the top of the fourth. Two straight walks by Shane Larry, but no harm done. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, it's 1-0 post-77 on HCAM and WACA-TV in Ashland. Bottom of the fourth inning, 4-5 four, and 6 do up for post-77 as Dom Cavanaugh steps in. He has one of the three post-77 hits today. That pitch down low, 1-0. and oh. Cavanaugh, Gustafson, and Jewett. 
Rips this one past the reach of the second baseman. That's going to be trouble. He's going to round first base and stay there. A good throw in by the right fielder, Sam Siegel. And it's a leadoff single for Dom Cavanaugh, the cleanup man. And it'll bring up Luke Gostovs in the DH. That's what they call a sizzling base hit. I think he thought about two. Right field, the thought that the second baseman was going to get that ball. Quite a lead at first base for Kavanaugh. And this is hit high in the air over to right field, and that is caught. Staying put at first base is Kavanaugh. And that'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. Siegel went over and got that ball. He was the uh, hard luck loser in the uh, first battle they had. Jewett awaits the pitch. And he'll rip this one over to center field, and that's caught. And back to first base goes Kavanaugh, two away. And he'll bring up John Pesson, the center fielder. Jewett has got to be happy with his hitting this summer. He hit about 240, 250 in high school. Well, he was 6'4", 14 heading into this week. Or actually, excuse me, 6 for 9 heading into the week. And Dom Cavanaugh, 286 average, adding on to that this game with a pair of hits. Two for two on the day. That pitch inside, runner taking off from first to throw up is in time, and they got him. Caught stealing is Cavanaugh, and that'll retire the side in the bottom of the fourth to the top of the fifth we go. It's 1 0 post 77 on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Top of the fifth inning, seven, eight, and nine due up for Natick. Carter Duran, the catcher, Sam Siegel, the right fielder, and Peter Manoli, the second baseman, to face Shane Larry. A one nothing lead for post 77. Great pitcher's duel we got going on here this evening. As that is a strike, 0 oh and 1. Larry shakes off the sign and now deals. And this is up the middle, and it is gloved by Glassburn. A nice move there. Throw to first, no problem. Glassburn getting a lot of action today here at second base. As yep. Sam Siegel will step in. Well, I gave him a hard time about not shaving in the first game that his cat was licking off his whiskers. But no more, no more of that. He's slick Glassburn now for the rest of the year. And that was certainly... Uh, some slick baseball there as Leary deals. That one down low. Shane Leary graduated Ashland High School in 2017. His last year of eligibility for Legion Baseball. As this is up the middle and it is going to get by the shortstop. That'll be a one out single for Siegel. That one just took an awkward hop. And that'll bring up Peter Minoli, the second baseman. Again, the haunted infield. Yeah, that comes into play. That dirt is pretty choppy, I must say. The lefty hoping to do some damage here. One on, one out. Larry from the stretch. And this is hit high in the air over to left center. And it is caught by Dom Cavanaugh, no problem. Some good communication out there in the outfield. Pesson and Cavanaugh converging on the ball. I'll bring up Max Ferrucci. The leadoff man. Thank you. Anything I can do to help you, no problem. Runner with a little bit of a lead at first. As that one's fouled away. Oh, and one. Max nice to see Sean Jewett just hop right out of the catcher's box. He's so quick to get out of the box. Ferrucci 0-4-2 today. Both times he's grounded out to second base. You know what they say, three times a charm, right, Tom? That's right. That one outside, one and one. 
He's not hitting first for nothing. We'll see what happens here. Larry from the stretch. He deals, and this is up the third base side. Takes a couple hops on the grass, picked up, throw to first, no problem. Nicely done by Lewis Rossi. Five to three for the third out. And we will head to the bottom of the fifth with post 77 leading Natick one to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the fifth inning, seven, eight, and nine do up for post 77. John Pesson, Zach Pesson, and Cole Glassburn to battle Hayden Scully. I like the way Coach Johnson is uh, packed to the Pesson brothers together. Very nice job. Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> Pesson, Pesson, and Glassburn. Scully's set to deliver. That one up high. Well, I think the key to this game is going to be which pitcher gets tired first. Who's going to make that mistake? There's a strike, one and one. John Peston hitting a 133 coming into this week. Well, it's nice to see Coach Obert down at third base. That's fouled away. Star of last year's team, but his arms are fresh tonight. He hasn't been waving people home. Well, hopefully we'll uh, see many waves home this week. As this is hit in the air over to center field and caught by Ferrucci, who was in the right place at the right time, one away. 77 has won the battle so far in hard hit balls. They've just been hit at people. I'll bring up Zach Pesson, who's hitting a 308 coming into this week. There's a strike. Yeah, I'd say the fielders have been nicely placed in this game for both sides. Scully deals, and it's a wild one, one and one. Scully set to deliver, leg lift and the pitch, swinging strike, one and two. Cole Glassburn due up next. He's gonna show his Minuteman brethren, including Jay Gobid, and Dylan O'Leary, who's helping out this summer. Late time called by Zach. Plenty of representation out at that college. But the four from Holliston and the one from Hopkinton and strike three on Pesson. Two away. That'll bring up Cole Glassburn, the second baseman. 0 for 1 so far on the day. Hits have been tough to come by in this game for either side. Four hits for post 77, two for post 107. There's they, a strike. They're giving Cole some respect out there. Normally with a nine hitter, they bring in the outfielders, but they're staying in their spots. Scully delivers. And this is hit in the air over to left center. That'll get down for a base hit as Cole Glassburn going to head over to second base. All kinds of trouble out there in the outfield. He's going to head over to third, the cutoff man with the throw. And it is in time. They get him. So it is a double for Glassburn. Then he's thrown out trying to head to third. And we will head to the top of the six. It's 1-0 post-77 on HCAM and WACA-TV in Ashland. Top of the sixth inning, two, three, and four due up for Natick. Jackson Dobeck, Will Haskell, and Noah Joseph as Shane Larry deals. Swinging strike there. Shane Larry has pitched a gem of a game so far. He's given up. Two hits, no runs. As he deals here, that one is low, one and one. Tomorrow we have Hudson, and Wednesday we have uh, Newton. Waltham coming in on Thursday in a good battle against the top two teams. Lowell, there's a ball in the dirt. Three strikeouts on the day for Larry so far. 
That's a packed week of post-77 baseball. They got most of their road games over with. Now it's pretty much home throughout. There's a couple road games mixed in there. Not this week. Nope. All home this week. And as long as the weather cooperates, you can expect all the games to air on WACA-TV and HCAM, as well as HCAT and Holliston as Dobek draws the walk. Larry didn't want to do that. Walked the leadoff hitter. Will Haskell, the left fielder, stepping in. So we'll have to deal with three, four, and five now. Keep the run game in check. I'd say after Natick threw out Cole Glassburn trying to advance the third after a base hit into the outfield, they got some momentum on their side. Well, that was a dummy move by Shane Leary. That wasn't close to being his best move. As this is up the first base side and a throw over to second by Pesson for one. Now the throw back. And I believe they got them both, and they did. Did Pesson uh, touch the bag? Um, because I don't oh think no. uh, Jackson they Horning. Did, excuse me, they did not get the runner at first, but they did get the leadoff man. So Haskell reaches on the three to four force out. Would have had him if he just touched the bag and threw and Hornung put the tag on the runner. They would have had a DP, but. He took a step back. He must have just missed the bag. As Noah Joseph steps in, the shortstop. One on, one out. There's a strike. They had a little stare down uh, the last time uh, they were facing each other. Got a little close on that ball four. Runner leading off of first. And this is up the middle past the reach of Larry. The flip to second for one throw to first. Got him. Double play. Four, six, three to wrap up. The top of the six, Natick will be down to their final three outs as we head to the bottom of the six. Post 77 up one nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. Bottom of the sixth inning as Ben Thomas steps in, the leadoff man for Ashland. Hayden Scully still out there as that one's fouled away, 0 and 1. Ben Thomas one for two today, singled and scored the only run of the game in the third inning. That was off a Lewis Rossi base hit. That pitch up high, one and one. Scully set to deliver. And this is fouled away, one and two. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for Ashland Legion Baseball. Connor Donovan on camera. And we'll be at Hopkinton Middle School quite a bit this week as this is the first of five this week for post 77 right here at Ashland Middle School. I don't want you to confuse the fans, but uh, it is Ashland Middle School. That's what I said. Because the folks at home might not want to go to Hopkins Middle School. <laughs> two and two. And this is up the middle past everybody. That'll trickle in a right field for a hit. Siegel thought about picking up that ball and throwing it first. He charged that ball. Yep. But Ben Thomas just too fast up the line. He has one stolen base today. We'll see if he goes for a second as Lewis Rossi will step in. I like that aggressiveness from Siegel. I like the Ben Thomas, Lewis Rossi at the top of the lineup. That's a great combo. Two lefties. Yep. Checking at first. Slides back safe. They were coached up definitely based on the last game. Ben Thomas will steal on anybody at any time. So the native coach probably took a look at the boat book and said, how, how do we get beat that bad? Wind up in the pitch. Inside. 1-0. Catcher held that one just an extra second longer to give the umpire another look. Didn't get the call. Checking at first. Runner slides back just safe. Pretty good pickoff move by Scully. I'd say. And this is hit in the air, foul. One and one. Where he likes to go, left side of the diamond. 
Third baseman playing in tight. Bit of a lead off of first base. And this is driven into right field towards the wall, but it is caught on a leap by Siegel. A nice play in the outfield for Siegel, and there is one on with one out. That'll bring up Jackson Horning, the shortstop. If that ball got over Siegel, that would have been all kinds of trouble for Natick. Thomas with a bit of a lead off of first. Check in, slides back safe. Ben Thomas, not afraid to take a lead. He'll deal with several check-ins as this pitch is low. Thomas taking off, slides in a second. Is he safe? Yes. Second stolen base of the game. Great slide there by Thomas. That was a close play. He likes to go in head first. Pitch up high. Jackson almost homered. His last at bat, I think. Well, Ben Thomas, uh, certainly a tough athlete, also plays football for the Holliston Panthers. They're holding him on. That one low, three and oh. Ben Thomas told me he's thinking about walking on at UMass Amherst, the club ball. There's a strike, certainly wouldn't blame him. Or maybe try out for the varsity. D1 program. I think you should. As this is up the left side, a leap by the shortstop, pulls it down, throw to first, over the first baseman, and that is going to be all kinds of trouble. As heading over to third is Thomas, and Hornung's going to be safe on the error. Well, that wakes up the Ashland bench, one, one base on that overthrow. Had it been overthrown from the outfield, it would have been two bases. First error of the game for either team as Dom Cavanaugh will step in. Credit that error to the shortstop. I'll credit that error to that haunted infield. I swear to you, Tom. The Gophers come out at night when all the lights are off and they poke holes in the skin of that infield. This time it worked to Ashland's advantage. I would believe that. And we're going to get a uh, discussion here on the mound as the native coach will talk to his pitcher. Looks like we might have a change here, but we'll, we're going to stay. Uh, Would he have had the? We're stay on until we know that's for sure. Could just be an infield discussion about how well, to proceed. They gave him the the bag on the overthrow, so maybe he would have had. So that's going to make it two nothing. So post 77 gets a run off of that as Ben Thomas is going to get an extra bag on the overthrow. So it is now 2 nothing post 77 as Kavanaugh gets a piece of this one over to right center. That's going to drop down deep in the outfield. Being waved around third is Hornung. He'll score easily. It's 3 nothing post 77. An RBI double for Dom Kavanaugh. Jane Leary can... Breathe a little bit easier now. Ball was smacked. He smoked it. It'll bring up Luke Gustafson, the DH. Some well needed security for post 77 here in this bottom of the sixth. And this is up the left side, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, got him. It is going to be six to three for the second out. Dom Cavanaugh does advance to third, and that'll bring up Sean Jewett, the catcher. Scully set to deliver. There's a strike, 0 and 1. I don't believe in jinxes, but that has to be a little bit Defeating to have that crazy ball trick there. That pitch low, one and one. And
And this is hit in the air over to right center, and that is going to be caught by the right fielder. Siegel just able to hold on, but post 77 plates, two runs, and it's three to nothing as we head to the top of the seventh on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Top of the seventh inning, Natick down to their final three outs. As Shane Leary set to try for the complete game. He'll have to deal with the five, six, and seven hitters. John Wernley, the third baseman, J.J. Hickman, the first baseman, and Carter Durin, the catcher. There is some warm-up action for post 77 in case Leary does run into any trouble. Is there strike one? Oh, and one. Owen Ward warming up. That pitch down low, one and one. One, one pitch. A bunt, and that is going to be up the third baseline and foul. One and two. Nicely done by Jewett, pulling nice. that right up the line, popping right out of the box. Nicely done by the umpire. Jewett could have blocked him out. Yep. His back was facing the umpire, so we'll give the man in blue some credit there. One-two pitch. Outside. Two and two. Larry shakes off the first sign, now deals. And this is just past Larry, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first, no problem. Six to three for out number one. Flawless defense for post 77 tonight. Certainly is. I'll bring up J.J. Hickman, the first baseman. Set to deliver. Down low. One-zero -oh pitch, and this is. Hit in the air, foul territory, and Peston's going to try to chase it down, and he did make the catch. But was out of he play. out of play? Yes. yes, he was. One and one. First base umpire was all over that. Yeah, good effort, though. By the umpire or Peston? Peston. Oh. We don't give the umpires credits. Well, <laughs> the umpires in this game have been very good. I have no complaints. Neither do I. 1-1 one, one pitch. That one down low, two and one. Natick down to their final two outs. There's a strike, two and two. J.J. Hickman is 0 for 2 today. Did reach in the second on a force out. And this is up the third base side and bobbled by the shortstop, recovers, throws the first, in time. What a play by Hornung. Two away. Where are the college scouts? What a play that was. Bounced out of his glove, was able to recover. He threw the runner out by half a step. Hornung just knows how to keep his cool under any situation. As Carter Duran, the catcher, will step in. Natick down to their final out. And this is over the reach of Rossi at third base. In the left field it goes, and that'll be a two-out single. You had to jinx him, didn't you, Tom? Don't bring up Sam Siegel, the right fielder. It looks like we're going to actually have a pinch hitter here for Natick. Get you the name on um, just a moment. There is a strike. Leary's determined to finish this game. Well, it's actually an unlisted pinch hitter. The 0 1. Inside, 1 and 1. On, 
Cleary has just dominated Natick. We can combine the scores in the wrap-up. Certainly has. He deals. And this is going to be up the left side, bobbled off of Rossi, and no play will be made. There will be two aboard for Natick. Siegel reaches on the error. I won't mention the infield now. I'll bring up Peter Minoli, the second baseman. Well, first error of the game for post 77. And it's kind of hard to give him an error with the crazy hops there, but. I know the infield, but I think there you got to give it to him. Yeah, he's got his glove on it. Wind up in the pitch. Down low. Well, a little bit of pressure here on Shane Leary. Tying run at the plate. As this is going to be hit in the air over to left field and caught by Kavanaugh for the final out of the game. Post 77 will hang on and they will take the three to nothing victory over Natick. Quite a performance by post 77 out there today. And quite a performance by the starting pitcher Shane Leary going the complete game, giving up no runs, three hits, a fantastic pitching performance by Shane Leary for Ashland post 77. As Ashland takes down Natick by a final score of three to nothing, Ashland scores three runs on seven hits, commits one error. Natick, no runs on three hits, commits one error. Your player of the game has to go to Shane Leary just for that great pitching performance. And the offensive player of the game, we'll give it to Ben Thomas, who went two for three today and also scored two runs for post-77. He singled in in the third and was driven in by Lewis Rossi. And then he also singled in the sixth and came around to score on a Dom Cavanaugh base hit, which made it three to nothing at, or two to nothing at the time. Jackson Hornung would score in that inning as well. Post 77 improves to eight wins and two losses on the season. Natick falls to seven and five. The final score for the final time, Ashland Post 77 takes down Natick three to nothing. For Connor Donovan on camera, my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, as well as HCAM in Hopkinton and HCAT in Holliston. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Tom Nappy here with head coach of Ashland Post 77, Derek Johnson. Coach, a terrific performance out there, a great pitching performance by Shane Larry. Uh, he gets the complete game shutout win. Can you talk about Shane Larry's performance out there today and this team as a whole? Oh, Shane was awesome today. Uh, he pitched against him the first time we played him, did really well. I thought he did a lot better today. Um, you know, it's the second time out starting for us. You could tell the velocity was up there, but just like um, today, you know, our team ERA, we were talking just now that it's a two. Like our pitchers have been, I think there was 14 ground ball outs um, up till now in the season. They don't give up too many fly balls. You know, they keep the ball down, a lot of ground ball outs, and that's what he did today, um, which is huge. It makes it easy for our fielders. We made the plays, and, you know, I think he was at maybe – under 90 pitches for the whole game, which is, you know, really efficient, which, you know, can't ask for anything better than that. Go a full game, keep it under 100 and a bunch of ground balls. Coach, you have uh, six home games left, two away games, and you're 8-2 and two right now. How does that feel? This team just must be uh, very confident in the talent that's in, that, in, that's in that dugout. Yeah, no, we're really confident. We feel like we can uh, repeat last year, if not do better. Um, We've talked about, you know, if we don't get back to the state tournament, we'd be underperforming this year. We have the talent that's, if not the same, if not the same, better than last year. Um, you know, we had a good test at the beginning of the season with seven on the road straight, came back out of there, and, uh, you know, eight and two, and this is technically our second home game. So, you know, this week we'll determine how we finish the season, and, you know, it's nice to be home, but we got to capitalize on that. Well, Coach, we're looking uh – forward to a fun week of home games. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.
All right, Tom Nappy here with Shane Leary. Shane, you win a complete game today. You gave up no runs. Uh, how does it feel to go a complete game uh, shutout against this good Natick lineup that came into today, 7-4? and four? Feels good. Um, my field backed me up. Uh, my infielders made a bunch of great plays. Uh, that's all I could ask for. Pitch strikes and get, get ground balls, and that's how we do it. It's a good game. Yeah, there was a lot of great uh, defensive plays by the infielders, as you mentioned, especially in the second base and shortstop <laughs> area. Uh, can you just uh, talk about uh, Cole Glassburn as well as um, Jackson Hornung's performance out there yeah, today? Cole, Cole was great. Um, it seems like every ball was going to second base today, which is, I every ball that was hit, I was like, oh, Cole's got it again. But they did a great job, backed me up, and that's all a pitcher can ask for. It's a great game. And it seems like you guys have a lot of chemistry in there. A lot of new faces from new last faces. year, but it seems like a lot of chemistry. How do you like playing with this group this Love year? It. Uh, this is my first year playing Legion, and I wish I played later, uh, earlier, as I would say. But um, I came onto the team. They welcomed me. A bunch of new guys came on, too, and kind of started from the beginning. And now our chemistry's there. We're rolling. That's all we can ask for. All right. Well, hopefully uh, many more games to come, and it's certainly good to have you this year. Congratulations on a great performance out there today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys.